Good evening. Welcome to the Mind of STEM channel, where you get your daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm your host, Leon Jones. And in this segment, I'm going to talk about a topic that isn't part of science, technology, engineering, and math as far as a curriculum goes. However, there is science that is part of the subject because this subject is used to prepare food. Some might be asking, what's the topic? What I'm going to talk about tonight is the science of cooking. Tonight's topic, I'm going to talk about the science of cooking. Now, I know some of you have seen Hell's Kitchen, and if you worked in restaurants or hotels or even cooked at home, a number of us look at cooking as food consumption, and presentation. But many of us don't know that there's a science that goes into cooking food. Now, before I get more into the topic, I want to define cooking. So here we go. Cooking or cookery is the art, science, and craft of using heat to prepare food for consumption. Cooking techniques and ingredients vary widely across the world, from grilling food over an open fire to using electric stoves to baking in various types of ovens, reflecting unique environmental, economic, and cultural traditions and trends. Types of cooking also depends on the skill levels and training of cooks. Now, cooking is done by both people in their own dwellings and by professional cooks and chefs in restaurants and other food establishments. Cooking can also occur through chemical reactions without the presence of heat, such as in a ceviche, which is a traditional South American dish where fish is cooked with the acids in lemon or lime juice or even orange juice. Now, preparing food with heat or fire is an activity unique to humans. It may have started around 2 million years ago through archaeological evidence for it reaches no more than 1 million years ago. Now, the expansion of agriculture, commerce, trade, and transportation between civilizations in different regions offered cooks many new ingredients, new inventions and technologies such as the invention of pottery for holding and boiling water, expanded cooking techniques. Now, some modern cooks apply advanced scientific techniques to food preparation to further enhance the flavor of the dish that will be served. Now, let's talk about the history. Now, Phylogenic analysis suggests that human ancestors may have invented cooking as far back as 1.8 to 2.3 million years ago. Reanalysts of burnt bone fragments and plant ashes from the Wonderwork Cave in South Africa has provided evidence supporting control of fire by early humans back 100, or correction, back 1 million years ago. Again, South Africans provided evidence of supporting the control of fire because they were early humans 1 million years ago. Now, there's evidence that Homo erectus were cooking their food as early as 500,000 years ago. Evidence for the controlled use of fire by Homo erectus beginning some 400,000 years ago has wide scholarly support. Now, 
archaeological evidence from 300,000 years ago in the form of ancient hearths, earth ovens, burnt animal bones, and flint are found across Europe and the Middle East. Now, anthropologists think that widespread cooking fires began about 250,000 years ago when hearths first appeared. Recently, the earliest hearths have been reported to be at least 790,000 years old. Now, communication between the old world and the new world in the Columbian Exchange influenced the history of cooking. The movements of food across the Atlantic from the new world, such as potatoes, tomatoes, maize, beans, bell pepper, chili pepper, vanilla, pumpkin, cassava, avocado, peanut, pecan, cashew, pineapple, blueberry, sunflower, chocolate, gourds, and squash had a profound effect on old world cooking. Now the movement of foods across the Atlantic from the old world, such as cattle, sheep, pigs, wheat, oats, barley, rice, apples, pears, peas, chickpeas, green beans, mustard, and carrots, similarly changed New World cooking. Now, in the 17th and 18th centuries, food was a classic marker of identity in Europe. In the 19th century, the age of nationalism, cuisine became a defining symbol of national identity. Now, the Industrial Revolution bought mass production, mass marketing, and standardization of food because factories processed, preserved, canned, and packaged a wide variety of foods and processed cereals. They became a defining feature of the American breakfast. In the 1920s, freezing methods, cafeterias, and fast food restaurants emerged. Now, when we talk about ingredients, most ingredients and cooking are derived from living organisms. Vegetables, fruits, grains, and nuts, as well as herbs and spices, come from plants. While meat and eggs and dairy products come from animals, mushrooms, and the yeast used in baking breads are kinds of fungi. Now, cooks also use water and minerals such as salt. Cooks can also use wine or spirits. Now, naturally occurring ingredients contain various amounts of molecules called proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. They also contain water and minerals. Again, you hear natural ingredients like proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. They also contain water and minerals. Now, one thing you need to know about cooking is it involves a manipulation of chemical properties of these molecules. Now, when we talk about carbohydrates, basically a carbohydrate includes common sugar, sucrose, which is table sugar, um, also includes a disaccharide, and such simple sugars as glucose and fructose. Now, fructose is made from fruit. Glucose is made by enzymatic splitting of sucrose and starches from sources such as cereal flour, rice, arrowroot, and potato. This is why when you talk about dieting, you have good carbs and bad carbs. Now, the interaction of heat and carbohydrate is complex. Long grain, long chain sugars such as starch tend to break down into simpler sugars when cooked, while simple sugars can form syrups. Syrup you put on your pancakes. Now, if sugars are heated so that all water of crystallization is driven off, then caramelization starts with the sugar undergoing thermal decomposition with the formation of carbon and other breakdown products producing caramel. Similarly, the heating of sugars and proteins elicits the Maillard reaction, a basic flavor-enhancing techniques. Now, an emulsion of starch with fat 
or water can, when gently heated, provide thickening to the dish being cooked. Now in European cooking, a mixture of butter and flour is called a roux, is used to thicken liquids to make stews or sauces. In Asian cooking, a similar effect is obtained from a mixture of rice or cornstarch and water. Now these techniques rely on the properties of starches to create simpler mucilaginous saccharides during cooking, which causes the familiar thickening of sauces. This thickening will break down, however, under additional heat. Now we have fats. Now types of fats include vegetable oils, animal products such as butter and lard, as well as fats from grains, including maize and flax oils. Now fats are used in a number of ways in cooking and baking. Now to prepare stir fries, grilled cheese, or pancakes, the pan or griddle is often coated with fat or oil. Fats are also used as an ingredient in baked goods such as cookies, cakes, and pies. Now fats can reach temperatures higher than the boiling point of water and are often used to conduct heat to other ingredients such as frying, deep frying, or sauteing. Fats are used to add flavor to food. Example, butter or bacon fat. And when you use butter or bacon fat, they're good sources because they prevent food from sticking to pans and they create a desirable texture. Now the big thing we talk about proteins. Now, animal, animal material, including muscle, offal, milk, eggs, and egg whites contain substantial amounts of protein. Almost all vegetable matter, in particular legumes and seeds, also includes proteins, although generally in smaller amounts. Mushrooms have a high protein content. Now, any of these sources of essential amino acids when proteins are heated, they become denatured or unfolded and change texture. Now, in many cases, these causes this causes the structure of the material to become softer and more friable. Meat becomes cooked and is more friable and less flexible. Now, in some cases, proteins can form more rigid structures, such as the coagulation of albumin and egg whites, the formation of relatively rigid but flexible matrix from egg white provides an important component in baking cakes and also underpins many desserts based on meringue, like lemon meringue pie. Water, very important because cooking involves water and water-based liquids. This can be added in order to immerse the substances being cooked. This is typically done with water, stock, or wine. Alternatively, the foods can release water, like cabbage. Now, a favorite method of adding flavor to dishes is to save the liquid for use in other recipes. Liquids are so important to cooking that the name of the cooking method used is often, on, often based on how the liquid is combined with the food, as in steaming, simmering, boiling, braising, and blanching. Now, heating liquid in an open container results in rapidly increased evaporation, which concentrates the remaining flavor and ingredients. Now, this is a critical component of both stewing and sauce making. Now, we get into vitamins and minerals. Now, vitamins and minerals are required for normal metabolism, but which the body cannot manufacture itself and which must therefore come from external sources. Now, vitamins come from several sources, including fresh fruit and vegetables, vitamin C, carrots, liver, vitamin A, cereal bran, bread, liver, B vitamins, fresh liver oil, vitamin D, and fresh green vegetables, vitamin K. Now, many minerals are also essential in small quantities, including iron, calcium, magnesium, sodium chloride, and sulfur, and in very small quantities, copper, zinc, and 
selenium. Now, the micronutrients, minerals, and vitamins in fruit and vegetables may be destroyed or eluded by cooking. Now, vitamin C is especially prone to oxidation during cooking and may be completely destroyed by protracted cooking. The bioavailability of some vitamins such as thiamine, vitamin B6, niacin, folate, and carotenoids are increased with cooking by being freed from the food microstructure and blanching or steaming vegetables is a way of minimizing vitamin and mineral loss in cooking. Now, of course, when it comes to cooking, one must understand that there are different methods of cooking. And some of the methods of cooking have been around since antiquity. These include baking, roasting, frying, grilling, barbecuing, uh, smoking, boiling, steaming, and braising. A more recent innovation is microwaving. Now, various methods use differing levels of heat and moisture, and vary in cooking time. The method chosen awfully, well, basically not awfully, but the method chosen greatly affects the end result because some foods are more appropriate to some methods than others. Some major hot cooking techniques, again, I've already named them for you, but I'll go over them again. Roasting, baking, boiling, frying, steaming, and smoking and of course one must understand that cooking is great because if you don't cook your food there are foods that have foodborne illnesses that will occur if foods are eaten raw now when it comes to food food is more than an art. Food is cooking. But now let's go back and interpret what I just said. When I say food is cooking, we have to cook the food in order to consume it. But the science part of food comes from your minerals, your fats, your vitamins, also comes from heat. Heat can be latent heat. It can be convectional heat. But overall, when we talk about cooking, uh, one must understand that there's two types of cooking. There's home cooking and commercial cooking. Home cooking explains itself as the name. We cook at home, commercial cooking, and restaurants. But overall, no matter what type of cooking you do, one must understand that cooking is the art, science, and craft of using heat to prepare food consumption. Cooking techniques and ingredients vary across the world, from grilling food over an open fire to using electric stoves to baking in various types of ovens, reflecting unique environmental, economic, and cultural traditions and trends. Now that concludes this topic on the science of cooking. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for a little bit more political content and news, check out the 401 Talk Zone radio show on YouTube and to go into more of a deeper depth in the topics, check out my blog talk radio show. Now, in February, I'll do more blog talk radio shows. I've been busy because I've had other projects going on, but I will get some more blog talk radio shows out. I have a guest call in number 215-383-5785. Now, if you cannot find me on YouTube or Blog Talk Radio, you can simply locate me 
on Twitter. Once again, thank you all for viewing this video and listening to this video from the Mind of STEM channel. And on this channel, you get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Until next time, my name is Leon Jones. You all have a wonderful and gracious night.